that's the hardest part is is because people are generally resistant to change and so uh, you know when you're talking about process change inevitably there is going to be a, for that operational uh, uh, level on the factory floor there's going to be some level of process change and and generally speaking people don't like change <laughs> and so whilst the uh, uh, executive suite may be all aspirational of you know what they're going to be in the future and how they want to do things. Um, executing that 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 down through the value chain, I think, is uh, I suspect is part of the bigger challenge. Um, there was one thing that you mentioned just as you started that ex, uh, answer to that question. Is you said something about uh, maybe it shouldn't be about change. Or can you, I just want to jump back to that. <laughs> it seemed like you said something big and we just skipped straight past. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was trying to let that slip through. I yeah. can end that by saying it's probably another topic. Remember that bit? <laughs> yeah, yeah let's, let's dive into that a bit. Can, tell me again what you're saying there. Maybe it's that I got a little bored over, over COVID. I don't know. But like, my brain went to places that... Um, that have opened my eyes to stuff, right? And, and I sit there and go, what can we learn from a virus? What can we learn from the virus? What's positive that we can apply to business? Hmm. And I, it, it leads you to Darwinism. It leads you to a whole bunch of things around how, how viruses work and mutate and how, how hard they are to keep up with and how they are optimised for chaotic behaviour, right? Hmm. And yeah. I'm like, okay, this is really interesting. And what comes out of that for me is evolution evolutionary organizations never have to transform mm. transformation is forced upon you you transform because something has already happened it's too late and when you think about the crazy compromises large organizations are going through when they do their transformations they compromise themselves back to their starting position transformations go in a circle what you've got to do is take a step ahead and then stay ahead which means you're transforming all the time but in much smaller increments so I look at that as being more evolution than transformation. Mm. Um, and I think there's a massive shift happening in the market right now for evolutionary organisations um, and that those organisations have certain characteristics that allow them to do that, right? And, and, and things like um, this kind of shared value, like they kind of appreciate everybody extracting value together um whether it's i mean you know that we, we had the old um, ecosystem type conversation right which is which is fine but i'm talking about next level ecosystem it's like mm. customers get value you get value your partners get value people you don't know get value from it so it's this concept of shared value that thing i talked about earlier about using data to look at weaker signals or look forward i think that's yeah. part of like they, they can do that really really well um, and I also think that there's something a bit cheeky about them, which is that they, they seek out change. They actually look for change. They're not bound by um, industry or product or, or business model. They just see an opportunity and they can go after it. Mm -hmm. And you see that companies like Gojek or Grab or um, I guess Amazon to some extent, right? They just enter markets unexpectedly that you just, didn't think, but they just see an unmet need in a, in a, in a customer base and just hit after it. Mm. So as I said, it's a, it's a much bigger topic, but in my head, this is where my head's been going over the last sort of, sort of year and a bit about there's something about the failure in transformations because of compromise politics, you know, legacy technology, all these kind of things that people aren't facing into or don't have that kind of courage to really bust through that's made me go, there's got to be a different way. And, and so that's that's kind of where I'm heading with it. I see the seeds of a new book, Digital Transformation is Dead. I, I didn't want to write the first book. I'm not going to write another <laughs> book. <laughs> hey, listeners, hope you had a wonderful time with that conversation. For those who stuck around, we've got a very special surprise for you because we're giving away a copy of Gary's book, Digital Transformation Game Plan, courtesy of O'Reilly. To win it, simply follow us on Twitter, at ToroCloud, like and retweet our contest post it's that simple so what do you think of that podcast episode let us know in the comment section from the podcast platform you're listening to 
Also, please visit our website at torcloud.com for a transcript of this episode, as well as our blogs and our products. We're also on social media, Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram. Talk to us there because we listen. Just look for Toro Cloud. On behalf of the team here, thank you very much for listening to us today. This has been Kevin Montalbo for Coding Over Cocktails. Cheers!